Hi students. Today we are going to read The Wolf's Chicken Stew. This book was written by Kiko Kaskla. Looking at the front cover, I see a wolf wearing a chef hat and carrying a cookbook. I see a hen wearing a bonnet. That's a type of hat that ties under your chin. Do you think that this is a fiction book or a non-fiction book? How do you know? You're right. Wolves do not wear hats. Wolves do not use cookbooks. Hens do not wear bonnets. This is probably make-believe fiction, a book that we would read just for fun. Let's read The Wolf's Chicken Stew. There once lived a wolf who loved to eat more than anything else in the world. As soon as he finished one meal, he began to think of the next. One day, the wolf got a terrible craving for chicken stew. All day long, he walked across the forest in search of a delicious chicken. Finally, he spotted one. Ah, she is just perfect for my stew, he thought. The wolf crept closer, but just as he was about to grab his prey, that's something he's hunting. He's hunting the chicken. He had another idea. If there were just some way to fatten this bird a little more, he thought, there would be all the more stew for me. So he wants to make the bird grow so that there's more chicken. So, the wolf ran home to his kitchen and he began to cook. First, he made a hundred scrumptious pancakes. Then, late at night, he left them on the chicken's porch. Eat well, my pretty chicken, he cried. Get nice and fat for my stew. The next night, he brought a hundred scrumptious donuts. Eat well, my pretty chicken, he cried. Get nice and fat for my stew. And on the next night, he brought a scrumptious cake weighing a hundred pounds. Eat well, my pretty chicken, he cried. Get nice and fat for my stew. Are you noticing a pattern here? Every night the wolf is bringing something that is either a hundred of them or weighs a hundred pounds. And then he says something. What is he saying again and again? He says, eat well, my pretty chicken. Get nice and fat for my stew. At last, all was ready. This was the night he had been waiting for. He put a large stew pot on the fire and set out joyfully to find his dinner. That chicken must be as fat as a balloon by now, he thought. Let's see. But as he peeked into the chicken's house, the door opened suddenly and the chicken screeched, Oh! So it was you, Mr. Wolf. Children, children, look! The pancakes and the donuts and that scrumptious cake, they weren't from Santa Claus. All those presents were from Uncle Wolf. The baby chicks jumped all over the wolf and gave him a hundred kisses. Oh, thank you, Uncle Wolf. You're the best cook in the world. Uncle Wolf didn't have chicken stew that night, but Mrs. Chicken fixed him a nice dinner anyway. Aw, shucks, he thought as he walked home. Maybe tomorrow I'll bake the little critters a hundred scrumptious cookies.
and it looks like he did. So this is a fiction book. It's one written just for fun. It had characters and setting and a beginning, middle, and end. Who were our characters? Remember, the characters are the people or animals that are important to a story. You're right, the characters were the chicken and the wolf and even her little chicks, all of her children. The setting, it was out in the woods at the wolf's house and the chicken's house. What happened in the beginning? What did the wolf want to do to that chicken? How did his feelings change at the end of the book? How many cookies did he bring them at the end? How many donuts did he bring them in the beginning? A hundred. 